In a week where the superstar shone, this chart went above and beyond. 86 was the year the brightest and best appeared, and in August this 10 did no wrong. In at number 10 for the third of a three week stay were reliable hitmakers the Eurythmics, who had abandoned their trademark cold synth sound for a more eclectic pop style. The band racked up 17 top 20 hits and a number one with Would I Lie to You, and are very fondly regarded here in these climbs. Number nine is one of the most divisive songs on our chart Lionel Richie's Dancing on the Ceiling. Seen by many as the second, maybe even third tier talent behind the Madonna, Princes and Michael Jacksons. More on the level of a Phil Collins, if you like. While others see him as a song Smith Supreme. This song rose dramatically this week, up from 20 to 9, got as high as number 2 and then fell precipitously into oblivion. At number 8, speak of the devil himself, it's Phil Collins fronting a genesis who sound indistinguishable from his solo work. Just what the world needed. More Phil Collins. But it's not all his fault. They have booked the world's worst ever producer in Hugh Padgham, so he has to take some of the blame. To counter, the C to A key change in the last chorus is why God made key changes. Still, on the whole, it's a Mike and the Mechanics B-side, both at best and at worst. Number seven, regular viewers will know that I have always been somewhat disdainful towards legendary Aussie band Midnight Oil. I find their music passable as long as I don't listen to their lyrics. And so, thus arrives at number seven with a wolf and a rush, the Dead Heart, which harumphed and stomped around the top 10 for two months without accomplishing much. The accompanying album Diesel and Dust is widely cited, if not as the best, then one of the handful of best Australian albums of all time. I myself don't get it, but it should be obvious now there's just a lot I don't get about Midnight Oil. Number six is the biggest hit from one of the Australian synth pop acts that predominated in the mid 80s, Wah Wah Nee with Stimulation. They cracked the top 46 times and the top 10 three times. They even had an album make inroads in the USA, but ultimately they weren't distinctive enough to form their own independent identity. Sadly, two members of the band, keyboardist Phil Witchett and singer Paul Gray, have since passed away. Now it's time for our newest feature, Hello and Goodbye, dedicated to those songs leaving the top 10 this week and the noobs bustling in. Inward and upward, it's Lionel Richie who jumps dancing on the ceiling from 20 to 9, and my favourite group of commie no goodniks, Midnight Oil, who are up from 18 to 7 with the dead heart. Tearful farewells a bit to ACDC, who's underrated Who Made Who, ducks out of the top 10 after 5 weeks for a top of 8, and Mike and the Mechanics with All I Need Is a Miracle, which spent four broken weeks in the top 10, likewise for a top of eight. Now the next number one single to rule the charts debuted this week at number 16. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Number five is one of those records you just can't figure out why it wasn't a bigger hit. Wham's uber poppy Edge of Heaven. Perfect mid 80s pop. This was to be the boys' second to last single before enjoying what George Michael called the most amicable breakup ever. Wham were, like it or not, an integral part of the fabric of the early to mid 80s, and this is one of their best, deserving much more than the mere 11 weeks that it spent on the charts. Number four, in August 1986, I was in a band. Not a serious one, but one where I could work two or three nights a week around a wide circuit of venues, which was fine for the alternative rock bands. The city's gay club scene was more difficult to negotiate. Originally, way back when, it was Brunhilde's in Kangaroo Point. Then the sportsmen at Spring Hill, the ladies moved a little further up the road to the Alliance in the mid 80s. The Hacienda, which was on Brunswick and Berwick, and then the Silver Dollar and the Terminus in Wickham Street, and Rose, which was actually in the city. Finally, as the clubs began to close down under a welter of fines and patron beatings, the Cockatoo Club, a licensed cabaret now known as The Beat, opened in the early 80s and the Wickham followed around the turn of the century. Why is this relevant? 
because every time my then girlfriend Miss Fifi and I would go to the beat and say what you will about it, it was always great fun, they'd be playing I Want to Be a Cowboy by Boys Don't Cry. That's all. Really, a forgettable record, but a bit of an anthem for an emerging gay identity in a city where it had long been brutally suppressed. Number three, Spirit in the Sky by Doctor and the Medics. I like this record. I like it a lot. Norman Greenbaum's original is one of the earliest huge hits I can remember. It was actually on the Reprise label, which was Frank Sinatra's label, and it sold more records than any record Frank Sinatra ever sold on that label. And I have many fond memories of it. And this version is very true to the original, adding some 80s style synth crashes to update it, and maybe even a touch of swing, but it's a darn good record, whatever way, and three weeks at number one in the UK speaks volumes. Number two is shapely Samantha Fox, who had recently retired as the UK's premier topless page three model and launched a pop music career with a huge hit in Touch Me, which spent 15 weeks in the top 10, including three at number one. She's not the greatest singer ever, but she also isn't the worst. She's way better than the girl from Transvision Vamp, for example. And now we reach the farcical Farago that's Fowl's fantastic world of facts. Biggest riser this week is local next big things, Boom Crash Opera, whose hands up in the air went from 45 to 21. The faller was Janet Jackson down from 25 to 46 with What Have You Done For Me Lately, which, whatever it was, clearly wasn't enough. Top Debutante at 16 is a record I've raved over a few times on this show, Venus by Banana Rama. I don't know anyone who doesn't love this record. It just flat out rocks. And the longest last of the Emeritus record on the charts at 22 weeks was Chain Reaction by Diana Ross. A great tribute to her longevity, but she never was no Martha Reeves. Number one in the USA was Madonna with Papa Don't Preach. Pretty gritty stuff for the times. And in the UK, it was that interesting chap Boris Gardner with I Want to Wake Up With You. A mere year ago, the number one record about town was Tina Turner's We Don't Need Another Hero. And a year in the future, it would be lovely Kylie Minogue with The Locomotion. The number one album is a sad reminder of a talent which I don't feel ever fully developed or was allowed to sustain itself in a manner where it could fully develop. Whitney Houston's debut album, which spent 11 weeks at the top of the pile. Well, with all the buzz we've built up, there's no way we can let an anticlimax slip in its way now. And our monkey MC is here to drum us in. Go, Monty, go! Top of the Pops this week is Madonna with Papa Don't Preach. Opening track on her slightly disappointing True Blue album, although my sister would argue otherwise, Papa Don't Preach spent six weeks on top. It's a huge step forward for Madonna vocally, her voice straining with emotion and urgency, and came back with a video that showed a radically made over Madge with a startling blonde crop and a few hard gym sessions under the belt. It just showed that when she put her time and energy to it, she was still the total package in a way no female artist ever had been before or has been since. And there we have it, folks. Thanks for stopping by, and if the good lords will and the creeks don't rise, we'll have another edition next week-ish. See you then.